Well, we're coming to you with a brand new show, a day early, breaking down the draft. So many reactions, lots of different players going lots of different places. All the winners and losers in the NFC, some news to talk about. It's a long one. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Monday, April 29th. Oh, what? I thought we release on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Well, we normally do, Mr. Moore, but today we're bringing the show a day early. Too much draft to talk about. So much draft. We do not want to delay, so we're releasing the episode a day early. As we talk through the NFL draft, the rookies, the NFC winners and losers on today's show, and uh, all of our reactions to what transpired over the weekend. We've already got our Dynasty League rookie draft happening. Many of you out there are in the mix uh, or in the midst of your own rookie drafts. We've been hustling. We've been, uh, the whole team, getting the Dynasty Pass ready. We've already got the the new Dynasty startup rankings, the rookie rankings. The new mock draft is up there in the Dynasty Pass. The risers and fallers are up there. And then, um, our so basically our post-draft Dynasty Pass update is nearly complete. It is the season. And I am telling you, I, I if, if you're watching YouTube, I took the IV bag out. But I have a, uh, I have a football drip. At all times since the you got a catheter uh, to match. Oh, for oh sure. boy, for sure, Mike. I don't know about uh, that. I, I can't go to the bathroom. I'm just football <laughs> is in the veins right now. It's just it is pure pumping NFL time right now. I'm so excited. Yeah, for those of you that joined us on Thursday for the rapid reaction show on NFL Plus, we appreciate you. That was a lot of fun, and we're breaking it all down fresh today. Thursday was wild, um, especially for. Kyle, go with the the Falcons fan of our of our crew. <laughs> oh, man. If you haven't followed what transpired uh, by way of, like there were HR complaints, because we all took a very strong emotional, yeah, uh, attack position on Kyle the Borgogan friend position. Yeah, it we, is. We were not, we were not working at that moment. We were having fun. We were with your buddies. We were taking our good buddy Kyle. And we had an opportunity to push his face into the dog poop on the ground <laughs> and say, don't do this, you loser. <laughs> and uh, Kyle captured quite the picture of the three of us ridiculing the Michael Penix Jr. pick at number eight, which is insane. I have – so it happened Thursday. Yeah. Today's Monday. Mm-hmm. I have spent five days trying to figure out how it could be – Defended. I was waiting. There like, is one way. Oh, I was saying I was waiting. Yes, of, I have. Of how is something going to come out, and then we're all going to feel stupid, so dumb because the Falcons actually outmaneuvered everybody, and just just on the surface, which we were all seeing, we all we, we are the ones who are dumb, not them. To me, the only justifiable reason, which we have yet to hear, would be that Kirk Cousins' injury is life threatening. <laughs> 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 he's, he's, he is. I mean, really, the injury one's in not an ICU. A, the, the injury one is not an excuse because they paid him the money. Yeah. So that's on that would be on them. The the only real one is if the tampering somehow meant they were going to void his contract, which Mike, you and I talked I about just, that. The NFLPA would pitch a fit. That wouldn't it doesn't seem like that would be viable. Yeah. Um they put the tampering onus on the team, not the player. And so penalizing the player doesn't make sense so yeah i'm back down to uh no defense the, only, the michael Penix the, jr the only it. way that we look back and say look this was the right move we were all wrong by we all i mean the entire world outside i have another thought in a second but the only way <laughs> the only way that it works is if if he turns out to be patrick mahomes like he's got to be 
first ballot Hall of Famer. Top he, he, top three in the league yes. perennially. He can't just be good. He can't be your future. He can't be a franchise quarterback. Well, that's, that's not good enough to justify spending the eighth pick when you've got a window here of you know, you're 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 playing to win. It's not like you didn't know you had the eighth pick when you signed Kirk Cousins to this massive deal. But what what I was the the, the new thought that just struck my head is because the whole world, people who uh, you know justify things and and try to find the the silver lining in bad picks, everyone universally agrees. There's, this is really an unjustifiable situation, with two exceptions, which is Falcons fans drinking the Kool Aid and the people in the draft room. And it dawned on me, like, there were enough people in that room where I don't know how this happened. Uh, there were, <laughs> there were like, a dozen people, and they were all clapping. No one raised their hand. <laughs> it was like, what? How, did, how could it how could it have people, happened? Good people try not to get fired. I know. I know that the uh, six quarterbacks went in the top twelve picks. We had offensive players for the first fourteen picks, never before seen in an NFL draft. And so, you know, was there a kind of uh, percolating sense that, like, you know, the desperation for quarterbacks, people trading up for quarterbacks, all of a sudden they're like, oh, everybody wants to come up and get a quarterback. Maybe we should too. Kyle, I mean, it's not like Kyle's not here listening to all of this, mm. reliving his mm. pain. Um, Kyle, have you found, you know, peace? any sense of peace <laughs> or a redeemable aspect to this trade? What are the odds that this works out for Atlanta? My body is here, but no, I am dead. <laughs> this is over. It's not going to work. He's not at also all. in the ICU. <laughs> so that was the huge storyline in the first round, along with all those offensive players going and uh we're breaking it all down today it's just it's so awful it's so it's, awesome it's, it's, it's so awesome well here's it's awful you think you it's, made a bad pick in your league out yeah. there fantasy football player it's off it it's awesome because of chaos and chaos can be fun but it's awful and like i think it i think it's bad for the team and it's also like this this dude like he, it's bad for Michael. He Penix did Jr. everything he was supposed to do to become a top ten NFL draft pick, and now he went to a team where if everything goes to their plan, he might start a football game in three years. Like yeah. And meanwhile, there was then we have more reports. You know, like the the Saints, the Raiders, and I can't remember the other team, but of Rappaport said they were trying to get into the top ten to to get Michael Penix. And this this kid who has achieved his life or part of his dream, number one, make it to the NFL, be a high draft pick. Yes, he's going to make a lot of money, but he wants to play. Like he he wants to be the franchise quarterback for a team, and he is immediately into a situation where this it's not wait half like where a lot of these guys like it might be half a year before they get in four games, six games, or even like Patrick Mahomes, a full entire year, and like. But the the Jordan Love draft path is just so different. Of it wasn't it, it, Jordan Love was not a top ten pick. He was late in the first round, as they were, as they were anticipating. But then the the Packers were in a Super Bowl window. They did not win a Super Bowl. Well, every but year now they they're like oh, but we got our quarterback in the future. And so it's it's a were, little bit of revisionist history. It's this was not premeditated. If it was, Kirk Cousins wouldn't have gotten a phone call moments before the pick where Kirk Cousins and his team literally said to them, this doesn't help us win this year. What are you doing? So Cousins was upset. Who you just The whole paid. team has to be. If you're a defensive player, yeah. or, or, like, are you happy that you drafted a, a backup quarterback? No. And I believe they had no – they got no corners out of the draft, which they desperately needed. Uh, this is not the Michael Penix or uh, Terry Fontenot hour, but wild. We're going through NFC winners and losers today. Uh, the ultimate draft week giveaway because we're releasing this show early and because of what transpired, <laughs> I am calling an audible. I'm going to extend the deadline okay. to uh, tomorrow. And I'm going to include a signed by Kyle Michael Penix <laughs> Jr. Jersey it's, in it's, the giveaway. This might be the most valuable thing we've ever given away. That's so mean. Did, <laughs> did we... Did we get one for <laughs> Kyle to keep as well? Because we, I really we feel got, like... We got three. Nice. We got one for Kyle to sign and send to a member of the Foot Clan. 
We got one to send to Kyle's a gift. Don't tell him about okay. that. <laughs> and we got a third one that will hang on that wall occasionally oh, man. on the back of the studio. So the so, NFL is up to five total Michael Penix jerseys sold? I, I, Kyle, I want your wife to video you <laughs> signing the jersey. <laughs> and I'm going to include some other swag in the giveaway as well. We'll extend it out another couple of days. UltimateDraftKit.com. That way you can get in there, take advantage of the giveaway, and uh, you'll have access to the post-draft update for the Dynasty Pass as well. And we'll give away the Listener League spot. We'll give away the signed ETN and Jefferson jerseys as uh, on top of it. So at the FF Ballers on Twitter, if you want to follow the show, the community is jointhefoot.com. Moving on from Michael Penix to some more news. News and notes from around the league. I wonder if the jersey will be covered in tears when, yeah, you, when you receive yeah. it. Yeah, because Kyle's going to open it. It'll have dried out by then. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it'll be salty. Yes. All right, the Eagles, just before the draft, they signed A.J. Brown to a new three-year contract extension. But wait, didn't they just do this with another wide receiver on their team? They did, Devontae Smith, last week. So $96 million deal for A.J. Brown. He's under contract through 2029. Not that that matters. And his total guaranteed money is $84 million. We will not hear about A.J. Brown's unhappiness again this year. Yeah, I mean, or I'll, will we? I mean, I hope not. <laughs> Obviously, um, from a dynasty perspective, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Jalen Hurts, they are they are a core that is staying together for the foreseeable future. Yeah, and, and for whatever reason in dynasty startup, and we just redid the rankings again with the rookies in them, there has been a little bit of this uh, weird vibe when I rank A.J. Brown. And that's gone for me now. Mm -hmm. Like he belongs in that top seven, six, five, wherever you have him. And um, he's going to have guaranteed production. He's one of the best in the game. Can't say that about this next player. <laughs> the Cowboys have signed former Cowboy Ezekiel Elliott. His former Patriot last year. He's back, baby. Uh, Tony Pollard is gone and they well, brought his cap back hit never left. Mike. Yes, They're uh, still yeah, paying yeah. dead cap. <laughs> For Ezekiel Are Elliott. they really? Yes. Yeah, I think I saw a tweet saying he's basically the third highest cap hit, if if you include what's him, this him is being back. unbelievably great news for C.D. Lamb and Dak Prescott. I I completely agree. Okay. The the running game is not fixed by Ezekiel Elliott coming off an inefficient season in in New England. Who, by the way, Zeke was one of the worst graded like pass blockers uh, in New England. And Tony Pollard's vacating a bunch of inefficient carries and targets, and Rico Dowdle is there. And right now, the all-in version of the Cowboys includes Zeke and Rico Dowdle. Yeah, I mean, Zeke was not And good. Royce Freeman. <laughs> thank, thank yeah, you, Yeah, no, literally, and Royce Freeman. Yeah. Um, yeah, he should be in the conversation. Zeke is not the same player that he used to be. Obviously, three and a half yards of carry uh, last year looked bad, is not. Good. He's about to be 29. <laughs> like, Looks bad is I, not good. That, yeah. That's doubling. I, I, it sucks that we, we always get here because this is what happens to NFL players. Prime Zeke was so good mm -hmm. and so much fun to watch and so incredible for your fantasy football team. But we always end up here. He's going to be 29. He is. My grandfather uh, like, who, used who, to be a decent basketball player. <laughs> and, then, and then he went out to play as a grandfather and fell into the fence. So, you know, you got to let it go at some point in time. From a fantasy perspective, he's actually going to be, he's going to have relevance. I know that's I was that's just going to ask. Yes, he is. It, so, like, the, it'll be Zeke versus Dowdle. Is, is, there's, it'll be Zeke. Zeke will be the be ahead of Dowdle. Dowdle's the better running back I, at this point. In their, I, I think it'll be Dowdle. In their careers, but I, I still believe that this team will – you know they're they're reinvesting in Zeke. Jerry Jones is at the top, and that guy, man, he has lost it. He is. Do, what are you, you talking guys, about the twenty fourth best team? <laughs> the, the, I That's mean, why they're picking twenty fourth. Not only is he saying funny clips like that, but the after day one, this was in the middle of the draft, literally before day two of the draft, when he is at the press conference saying how much he is in love with Jonathan Brooks, and he's very, very, very high on his board, and they. You know, it's the best interview he's had in 30 years. He's saying this stuff out loud. And then... <laughs> you can't do that. You can't. 
what are you doing? And then, of course, they, uh, they Jonathan lost Brooks out. lost out, and and he was also quoted as saying, you know, he really hopes to get one of these running backs on the roster. Nice. It, 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 it didn't work out that way, and so now you are signing Zeke almost as a show of, like, this is public. They're going to pass this is the PR. ball so much. Yeah, they are. Going to pass the ball so much. Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne both had their fifth-year options exercised by the Jacksonville Jaguars. We got news yesterday that Tank Dell, yeah. Tank Dell was treated for a minor gunshot wound. He's already been released from the hospital. He was part of a, um, what, what, what was it? A club? There were, I think there were ten victims. Yeah. In the it, club, but he was treated for a minor like, gunshot wound. He's okay. Crap news, but also, when you hear it, like you're like, hey, superstar athlete involved in gun violence, you go, oh, gosh, but. Like the yeah, he's a victim. the one silver lining is it was not like a ter like he's in a personal issue. It's just a really crappy situation, but he's okay. All right, uh, I think that does it for news. Unless Deucer's Alley has anything spectacular to share, do you guys have any information on why they drafted Penix Junior? No, still scouring, but now, not seeing but anything. I got a question. So the Falcon is sitting in. Have you considered that like it was so bad you have to change your actual nickname of being mm. the Falcon? What do you think? No, I'm going to ride with it. Okay. He's riding. You're right. going to fly with it. Grow up. <laughs> I'm going to ride with it. What are you, a Bronco? You, no, you, you're a Falcon. You a quail? <laughs> that's better. Dude, yeah, what, that's not what, is, that's what, is, not what is with quails? Quails, they fly only if you're about to run them over. It, that's the only thing a quail does. It, it is. They want to walk. They are mocking the rest of the animal kingdom yeah. of like, I have this beautiful gift. I can fly. Yeah. You cannot, but but I'm not going to. I'm going to run with my tiny little itty bitty legs. I've been wanting to talk about quails for a while. And I'm going to run. You know where I'm going to run? Directly into traffic. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm gonna bring all my babies with me. They're We're always just going right in the road. There ain't no solo quails out there. They're no, always they, together. They're looking to die together. <laughs> fly, you stupid birds. Yeah. Yo. I mean, they can. Yes, they can. They just they choose not I to. I choose not to fly. People actually in Arizona. I don't. I don't know if quail are are everywhere around the country as much as they are in Arizona. But Arizona we'll find out soon <laughs> on Twitter. I know that. Yeah, people go quail hunting with bowling balls. It's unbelievable. <laughs> they, they just just that's set how, them up and knock them down. That's how you go quail hunting out here. <laughs> they don't fly. Come on. <laughs> Everyone brings their bowling balls out. You want to go quail hunting? Yeah, are I got you a still new in camo? Pounder. Are I you still in camo? Yeah, you are right for sure. <laughs> yeah, camo bowling ball. All right. Well, They'll never see it coming. No, no, they put, they will not. <laughs> what is? Oh! All right. Um, enough of that. Let's start the recap. Hi, hey, rookie. Welcome to the NFL. Well, we're going to march through uh, the NFC teams today, little draft recap, winners and losers, and our reactions to what transpired for each of these franchises. We'll start in the NFC, and we will start in the NFC North with the team that had the first pick in the draft. The uh, Bears. Caleb Williams, 101. And uh, we love Caleb, Caleb Williams. We, you know, I think the hardest part is we're looking at rookie rankings. We're looking at dynasty startup rankings, and it's where you slot Caleb Williams in, but you know, from a fantasy winners and losers perspective, like I went into our show doc and uh, Kyle had put the Chicago fans as the winners, which certainly yeah, congratulations. They are. And then I went and added Caleb Williams as the winner because the Bears added Roma Dunze in this draft. Uh -huh. They already added Keenan Allen. They added DeAndre Swift. DJ Moore was a top five option. Like the equipment that they have uh, bestowed upon Caleb Williams is so elite that I really, really, I was really tempted to just have him higher than Jaden Daniels. I know the rushing cheat code, but I sure like Caleb Williams, and I'm not sure about Jaden Daniels' size. And so where are you with, with that discussion? Uh, uh, I, I have Caleb over Jaden, and I thought it, this the Keenan Allen trade was where my opinion started to shift of, okay, well, they're really serious about making sure that Caleb Williams has players around him. And then Adunze falling to nine, which did you guys see the uh, Ryan Poles was asked about the, the Michael Penix pick because they were right before I him. I have not. And they were like, did you see this coming? And 
he also thought the pick was pretty funny. I mean, he tried to be as as uh, kind as a as he could for his occupation, but he's just kind of stifles the laughter and then it's like, you know, I'm just I'm glad it worked out the way it did. Uh so once like once the transformation of oh, the Chicago Bears really are serious about we're going to build a as powerhouse of an offense that we possibly can. That's when I was more comfortable with having Jaden Daniels at two, despite the rushing. But yeah, so between the two of them, I do, I have Caleb ahead, which is, it feels very unlike my brand to have the, the more prototypical QB ahead of the, the rusher. It, it, this is one of the most surefire unfailing situations you could ever walk into. You, you've got, the draft capital of the 101 with not not just you know it's not James Winston at the 101 this is a prospect we've been talking about for years so he has all the time all the leash in the world to fail and be better but he has all the weapons around him with his pocket mobility his arm strength the fact that he goes through reads and you have three bona fide star wide receivers he's not going to fail. That doesn't mean that the Bears are going to win a ton of games, that they're going to be playoff bound this year. Maybe maybe they do, but he is not going to fail as a prospect. Well, clip that. Um, <laughs> Roma Dunze goes there as well, and, 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 you know, much like the situation with Ryan Poles and the Bears, I don't know if you saw Chris Ballard, because they took the first defensive player in the draft at 15, and he's literally yes. cackling in – the yep. draft room just saying we got the blank best defensive rusher in the draft because he couldn't believe it. Roma Dunze, there might be a little bit of waiting. Yes. But I expect it to work out really, really well. I do. And I think that the Bears were really smart here. Yeah, they could have uh, passed on a Dunze and gone a different direction. But in another draft, a Dunze could have been a top five pick if you didn't have the situation with Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr., it's doing the right thing by it's it's getting some more insurance for that number one pick. I'm so excited to watch this team play this year. The only thing working against the Bears is like the old school thing, Jason, where when the Lions draft a running back, everyone holds their breath. Mm -hmm. When the Bears draft a passer and you've never had a 4,000-yard passer and the record is like 3,800 yards by Eric Kramer, you still hold your breath. Yeah, I did I, I did finish statting out the Chicago Bears, so I've got my stat line for Caleb Williams. Look at that. He is the Breaking it out on all Monday. all-time leader for passing yardage okay. for the Bears, but does not crack 4,000. Uh, I was going to ask yeah, you. Yeah, sorry. All right, the Minnesota Vikings. They end up spending pick 10 on J.J. McCarthy. They moved up one spot. Swapped with the Jets, uh, a little bit of back-end draft capital to move a spot. By the way, the final scores, uh, and Kyle, you can correct me, I believe Jason and Mike had six picks correct. I had five. And so we got more correct this much, year than last much year. Much better showing than last year. I was undone by my risky business with Drake May and Jaden Daniels at the top of the draft. And, yeah, and I did not get a just an overall victory due to my risky business of J.J. to the Giants. J.J. McCarthy arrives in Minnesota, and I think it's a bit of an exhale for the Justin Jefferson managers. Uh, this is great. I think this is a, a – You like McCarthy a yes. lot, too. I, I think that McCarthy is going to be a good professional. Will I don't – for fantasy, that's that's very TBD. I wouldn't project him, you know, all of a sudden. You, next year we're talking about can't wait for a top-10 quarterback, J.J. McCarthy. I'd he could be like that fringe one. He's going to be an awesome streamer this year, just having the, the the offense that he does. But for the Vikings, who were truly staring down a, a – a, we're going to have to tear this whole thing down and rebuild it if you don't figure out <clears throat> at least a potential solution at quarterback. Because Sam Darnold is – Sam Darnold could have played the year and the team could have been a 500 – or right around there type of a team, but he's not the future of the team. To have someone who could be right here, and it costs very little, it, it's it's just such – it it's a great pick for the team, and it's a great pick for – like if, if you had Addison, not Jefferson withstanding, because Jefferson will get his, but if we went into the season as Sam Darnold, my, my confidence in Jordan Addison would be very low. But it's it, it's now like some optimism or optimism. 
The Green Bay Packers, Jason. The Green Bay Packers didn't do a lot by way of offensive fantasy options, but they did draft Marshawn Lloyd in the third round, running back out of USC, who some thought was maybe the most talented running back in the draft. Yeah, he was the number one guy on Daniel Jeremiah's board. Uh, he has he was probably the biggest riser leading up before the NFL draft for me in my running back rankings. I He's got a lot of things that I like. He's got plenty of speed. He can catch the ball. And the way that the Packers utilize running backs, he's, you know, I could see a, a very Aaron Jones fit. And I've been concerned with Josh Jacobs. I've That's where I've been since he signed here. He looked bad last season. And so now he comes over and he's got a great opportunity in front of him with, I, I mean, I started the Packers out. I was like, what an embarrassment of riches this team has. The youth and pass catching options are just unbelievable here. They are so deep at every single position. They can go five, six wide receivers with talent. They've got two talented tight ends. They've got pass catching running backs. It's great across the board, but Josh Jacobs has to prove himself. He's on a his contract was basically a one year deal. So the fact that they go in and they spend a day two pick on Marshawn Lloyd, you know, it's one I think is a bad sign for AJ Dillon. Where AJ Dillon oh, is, you you do you think it's bad for AJ Dillon? I do think it's bad for AJ Dillon. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> I'm just saying because uh, AJ Dillon's not good, <laughs> and um, yeah, Mar Marshawn but the Lloyd. Path, there's a path. There's a there's yes, a path for yeah. success, and more so there's. Uh, it, it, I think it hurts Josh Jacobs in the sense that the, the leash is shorter. Yeah, and, and like what you said with the contract situation, it, it, there is a path now. Uh, we'll take a quick break, come back, talk about uh, the Detroit Lions. All right, moving on to the Detroit Lions, looking at our draft recap, the winners and losers. Uh, well, they took cornerbacks with their first two picks. They have a pretty great offense right mm -hmm. now and didn't need to do a lot. They paid Amon Ra, and they go into the draft, and they um, they traded up for the largest man <laughs> that has ever existed. The the, the their the, fourth round, uh, which pick? Yeah, when they traded up into the fourth for the uh, the Canadian offensive tackle. Oh, that, Manu, that dude, Manu, Mountainu. That guy is <laughs> humongous. He's he's Mountainu. It, it looked like like I I know he's playing in can Canadian leagues, but like it looked like he was literally an adult playing with children when he's blocking them like he, he's reaching down so far to where those small regular people are i don't think we have anything to talk about with detroit uh there is a big winner to me uh, in, in detroit and it's jameson williams jameson williams yeah okay he, he, they, they in the off season you know they had josh reynolds leave they had you know they talked up jameson williams in ways that we joked about because it's like oh he's gonna you two make joked a push. about you two yes, joked he's about make a yes. push. but they have invested in him he now you know, i believe you just, you just look at the depth chart and you know he's gonna be on the field more which has not been where you know his snap percentages they just haven't been high enough for him to be fantasy relevant they said josh reynolds we don't even need you and then they didn't draft a single wide receiver in a very deep wide receiver draft class. So I think come that shows me. confidence come, in James. Oh, no, I will, I will come not. join me. I will. I will. I will join you in the double digits as a potential. But yeah, he probably low. Yeah. I'm going low odds. Washington, the Commanders. Uh, they had the second pick in the draft. They spent it on Jaden Daniels, Heisman winner, prolific final year at LSU. It was so impressive. And then they spend a second round draft pick on Ben Senate, baby, the senator. Oh! I am the Senate. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh my gosh. Guys, this is great. Guys, news Mike, Mike is Mike, this Mike. This was Mike and tight ends. I swear, it's so it's so amazing. It's like he finds his favorite, and man, you can't. Yeah, but you, I found I found my favorite. I mean, Brock, Give me the drop Brock. again. Let me get used to this. I am the Senate. The Senator in the second. <laughs> but he, but here, so I, I fell in love with this man, Mr. Ben Yeah, talk, talk to the people yep. about him that don't listen to the Dynasty show. Okay. Because you have been um, getting people to unsubscribe over yep. there due to <laughs> Ben Senate. So this go on. This is a new name. Ben, yeah. ben Senate, uh, he quickly became my number two tight end behind Brock Bowers. And... Like he 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 is a do it all tight end, has just a tenacity that you can see when you watch the film, and so I'm falling in love with him there. Like I think that this guy has a chance. He goes to the combine, he 
tears it up. And we know for fantasy football, currently the best thing we have to go off to, of to someone becoming a productive NFL fantasy football tight end is athleticism. So he check, production profile, check. It was just, is there a team in the NFL who feels the same way I do about Ben Sinnott? Will he get draft capital? Boom, round two draft capital, a place that... <laughs> It's to Washington? A place? Yes. That's where, where the actual? That's, Go ahead. The, 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 so, boom, that happens. He was already being called the senator for obvious reasons. I, I And then no he idea. goes to Washington. It's the oh, guys. I am. Mike is. Sick. The senator goes to Washington. <laughs> it yeah. was just. Yeah, I, this, was, this was a pick of destiny. Yeah, it seems and, that way. And Ben and Senate in the third round of your rookie drafts for tight end needy teams, I think is an incredible pick. Well, and the other good news is that he wasn't the first tight end drafted because that doesn't usually work out. I, I, I you know, <laughs> He was not going to beat out Brock Bowers. Well, but Gronk and Jimmy Graham and Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, Mark Andrews, Sam Laporta, none of these guys were the first. In, in, in tight end landscape in the NFL, it's like it just hasn't worked out for the number one guy. Not that it – not that it's – not going to this time this time <laughs> well the uh yeah i mean every situation is its own but historically you're right and Jane daniels comes into a uh it's beautiful he helps the offense this is an offense that passed more than anybody in football last year and yet didn't deliver you know uh what was it a top 24 wide receiver um it it, it was just it was hard to watch because the pass attempts were there and yet terry mclaurin Jahan dotson uh the tight end room uh you know, Antonio Gibson, they were all disappointments. So a little bit of hope with the new ownership, with a new GM, a new head coach. And Cliff Kingsbury. And Cliff Kingsbury. And you know what? Ben Sennett, not a great look for Zach Ertz and his no, one year deal. Yeah, long term. This is in Washington. This is excitement for a prospect. It's probably a little in bit the NF, not not a not a this year this guy. This is Trey McBride situation yeah, all over yes, again. It was the name I was going to bring up. Trey McBride drafted in the second round. Uh, he was the first uh, tight end drafted that se that season and does absolutely nothing. Is behind Zach Ertz. Second year, you can have that breakout. So, I, I, yeah, it's worth pumping the brakes. This is not yeah, a redraft yeah, draft yeah. player you're going to be drafting. But he is a good player. He's got a lot of that George Kittle in him. Yes, Just, he does. He is attacking people's faces. We missed some news. We did. We definitely did, and and that's on uh, that's on me for forgetting. The New York Giants, hey, hey, hey. who we're talking oh, about yeah, next. Yeah. Let's yeah. Uh, let's blame the producers. I know I took that on myself, and it was it not was my weird. fault. It I was did, not no, my fault. Not at all. It was Kyle's fault. Kyle. It yep. was Brooks' Check. fault. Brooks for sure. You could. Uh, I think it was Jeremy. Th the Falcons. Yeah. Oh, Falcon takes the brunt of it. Papa Josh. Papa Josh, because he's sold. Um, all of those people could have put it in the dock. None of them did. Uh, Darren Waller retired. You could have just said we saved the news for this part. We saved the news. <laughs> there we go. For the giant <laughs> section of the show, which, by the way, it's not in there either. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Darren, Darren Waller has retired from football and arriving as the sixth overall pick in the draft. Malik Neighbors, who I, you know, I think the opinions here, they – they may be wide. There may be some very afraid of this landing spot. I am not one of those people. I think it is a, an outstanding situation for Malik Neighbors, and I think it's going to provide a remedy to what we've seen in New York for quite some time now that Kenny Galladay couldn't fix, which is you didn't have the guy. Ever since Beckham left, there was not a singular superstar at the position. They tried it. You've ended up with Darius Slayton leading the team in, in yardage. Wandale, that's not his kind of role. And Darren Waller last year didn't work out. And now he's gone. Darren Waller has retired. It's now in the dock. It's in bold font, very large typeface. Thank you, team. I'm glad you put that in there. Uh, so, And they drafted a new tight end in the fourth round as well, Theo Johnson. But what was your reaction to the neighbor's pick? Yeah, in the neighbor's pick, you can. what you want is you want your wide receiver to be drafted to where there's no competition for targets and he's got a great quarterback. That doesn't usually happen. So you got to... You got to figure out what's more important. Right now, I love the fact that he is the number one target. He sometimes you're drafted in a situation where you are buried on the depth chart without a good quarterback. Here, there's question marks at quarterback, but Daniel Jones, when he gets back, I think he's good enough to be able to support Malik Neighbors being a, a top fantasy option. I see him as a top twenty or so wide receiver 
in his rookie year. He'll demand a ton of targets, and he's got that explosive athleticism to where even if he doesn't have great play, he's going to get a lot of you know, there a lot of passes probably behind the line of scrimmage where you can take a screen to the house. My uh, production team would like to remind people it is not a official retirement yet, uh, and yet the the Giants are operating as if he is retiring. You think that it being unofficial? Oh man! You think unofficial news is going to stop this podcast from reporting on it? Yeah, I got no way. I got two sources. One to the left of me and one to the right of me. Okay, this is journalistic <laughs> excellence. My sources are telling me Darren Waller's retiring. Oh, boy. The, Theo Johnson, a tight end that they drafted in the fourth round, is an athletic freak. Yeah, yeah. For for everything that Ben Sinnott did at the Combine, Theo Johnson. These guys out of Penn State. Dude, but, they, but they're never good. <laughs> like, well, Sa Saquon, Saquon was good, but yeah. Saquon was, you know, was you're just, Saquon. You're I'm just talking saying, Gesicki, dude. They, not just Gesicki. He wasn't... Uh, was Miles Sanders Penn State? Uh, yes, yes. Mine. Yeah, there's so a bunch of one. there's a bunch of guys. Yeah, that I feel like they have an excellent weight room there at Penn State, like a the, world class. The, weight we got room. this the the heaviest weights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Um, anything to add there on the Giants, Mike, or or shall we move on? No, nothing to add. All right, we're talking about the Eagles. They spent their first two picks on cornerbacks uh really enjoyed twitter and cooper dijon the entire although i've heard his name said both ways by the way which uh, dijean yeah that's how i usually hear it okay cooper so cooper dijean that, that, that was probably correct then Jean. um yeah. but twitter was having a lot of fun uh cooper dijean breaking some barriers <laughs> oh yes um, yeah, yeah will shipley in the fourth round running back out of clemson a player that i think is very versatile but they just yeah what, we haven't talked will shipley yeah because since, since we're waiting happened. to do that till next year <laughs> i well, mean that's he, how it feels cuz like will shipley is he's a, like an inspector gadget version of a running back of just can do everything but i don't robot but i don't know that he is obviously a fourth round pick like he wasn't drafted to be a superstar and they just gave a superstar running back a bunch of money but like, is there? Do you feel like there is a spot for him? Uh, there is a really valuable fantasy football spot due to injury. If if Saquon okay. gets injured, Will Shipley is a quality back that can step into an offense like this with an offensive line like this, and absolutely be exceptionally fantasy relevant. He's not going to do anything while Saquon is there. He's he's a backup. But we've seen Saquon go down to injury season ending injury before so uh, any any running back the back running back Ken, is Gainwell still there yes yeah I Boston Scott's still there right is he well at least Gainwell's there <laughs> let's just stick with that let's just stick with that but Will Shipley Kyle do you have the depth chart of uh under contract right now Will Shipley's talented he came in when he was uh going to Clemson he was by some accounts the number one running back in the country so this is not a guy that's out of the blue uh he was a talented guy and did well for Clemson uh, breaking news, Boston Scott, not currently in Philadelphia. Okay, that makes more sense. He'll be back. But, uh, no, I liked Will Shipley. I, you know, it's hard. Fourth round pick, Saquon's there. We'll move on. They drafted a fifth and sixth round wideout, or a uh, wideout in each round, not just one across two <laughs> rounds. Uh, Ania Smith and Johnny Wilson. Yep. Johnny Wilson's very large. And they have, uh, is Devontae, Devontae Parker's there now. Yeah. So uh, he's he's kind of their three, and and he's like, "Where's my money? They paid the one, they paid the two. <laughs> <laughs> They're all next out. up, Devontae Parker. <laughs> it's Parker time. Uh, shall we talk about Dallas? Uh, briefly. I feel like if Brooks was in studio right now, I would turn to him and say, "How did you feel about that draft?" And he would say, "Eh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Meh. You didn't. Yeah. They, they. Here's the thing. We are all fantasy footballers here." We want wide receivers and running backs. The team needed wide receivers and running backs, and they went and got meat and potatoes, which is oftentimes better for yeah, the NFL it really team. Is. That's long term. It's it's not saying that they had a bad draft. They just, for our purposes, boring. Well, I mean, and and uh, if you want more enthusiasm for what the running backs might be able to pull together, slash Dak staying upright and throwing it to Ceedee Lamb, two of the first three picks were offensive linemen, and then they went with an edge rusher in the second. So. You put it perfectly. All right, we get to talk about the Arizona Cardinals. Dude, yeah. What? They just 
I wish you had your song, Mike, because Mike wrote a wonderful song about. Um, uh, we'll we'll get a keyed up for. Uh, uh, do you want to? Ke- well, I mean, it's a long song, but um, uh, just we the, can share it. Just uh, the, just the best part. Your song that you wrote was that the Cardinals shouldn't do something dumb. Yeah. Don't trade out of the four spot and do something dumb. Now, obviously, Atlanta was willing to come up and take Penix at the four, <laughs> and so we probably should have negotiated with them. But other than that, they just stayed put. No wheeling and dealing, and Marvin Harrison Jr. arrives. Uh, he is my wide receiver five in yep. Dynasty Startup. I, I don't I don't blame you. I, I've toyed with him up right around there. I looked at whether he should be wide receiver four. Like I just said a minute ago, you what you want, the dream situation, is that you go to a place where there's no competition on the depth chart, and you've got a good quarterback in place. Well, it, yeah. let's add a third tier to that, that you want him to be the best wide receiver prospect you've ever seen, or at least this side of Calvin Johnson. You've got all three coming together here for the Arizona Cardinals and Marvin Harrison Jr. This is where we expected him to go. This is where we, as Cardinals fans, wanted him to go, but he rolls right into the first. Uh, I mean, he is the wide receiver one from week one. He will be, you know, 140 targets this season. He will... The DK line's over over a thousand yards already. Yeah, we've we've had a thousand yard rookie wide receiver pretty much every year for like the Flash. last like five yeah. five years, and uh, three out of the last four years we've had a rookie wide receiver go over fourteen hundred yards. If you had to put your chips on someone to do it this year, it would be Marvin Harrison. So he'll be probably drafted around the two three turn, and could be worth it. Now, ordinarily, you know, sometimes we celebrate our hometown team and nobody enjoys that probably uh on the show and i would have hit the button but i mean they didn't yeah. just stop at marvin no, harrison now you can hit a trey benson yeah baby mike your reaction to trey benson arriving in it, arizona it's it's really hard to put into words that are safe for this podcast sure because i mean if you weren't wearing pants after harrison you weren't wearing nothing after I trey was, benson i was butt naked <laughs> running through the streets <laughs> celebrating that my rb1 had come to we my had to gym. beg him to put clothes on for the youtube video and like there is like the, the the brooks versus benson running back uh argument i think is completely fair if people have brooks ahead we're I going th- streaky I, I think it's fine I still have Trey Benson ahead because I of of more he he's what I look for more of a, in a fantasy running back and he goes to a team that is like they're they're retooling the offense the the Cardinals uh I think it was a few shows ago we were talking about how it always happens in the NFL a team goes from just the worst to the to first yep I'm not saying the Cardinals go to first but just a big turnaround could well, happen rapidly for the Cardinals offense. Let's just remind people what, because the Cardinals have been one of the most popular teams to ignore for good reason in recent memory. And so let's just remind what they're working with at this point. Kyler Murray, a year removed from the ACL, back behind center. James Conner, league winner last year. We'll we'll weigh in on how that works with Trey Benson, but Conner has missed time every year of his career. Last year was the first time he reached 1,000 yards, which was crazy. That is crazy. He was he he is the starter. I mean, I just saw Kyler and James Conner together last night at the uh, at the terrible Phoenix Suns game, and wait, what? like no, no, James Conner is going to be the starter, but Trey Benson has so much ability that the future is Trey Benson in this offense. You've got Trey McBride at tight end. You now put Michael Wilson in a position where he can succeed as a wide receiver too, along with Greg Dorch in that offense. It kind of Harrison and Benson really fill out yes. your week-to-week guarantees from this Cardinals offense. So it puts you in a good position to to look at that team and say, you know, there is bounce-back potential there for them to to really step up as fantasy producers. Yeah, I would expect them to be a top-half offense this year, but not an, a prolific, great offense. I do think this, this team is built for two years from now. Uh, when, when Marvin Harrison goes into year two, Trey Benson kind of takes over because James Conner has basically one year left on his deal. Yeah, this is the so end. So th- this is a great, you know, dynasty team to invest in, I believe, because you're kind of at the beginning of a uh, future goodness. For redraft purposes, I'm not sure Trey Benson is much more than an insurance back behind Conner, but if you want an insurance back, 
taking the one behind James Conner is usually going to get some playing time. It, I think it'll be interesting because the 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 last few years when Conner has been fantastic, there just there hasn't been somebody who can actually take Conner off the field. Like they have yeah, not had Demarcado. They have not had running backs good enough. Frankly, they still did it. Yeah. I mean, they did. They did it all the time. I mean, <laughs> we were dealing with Michael Carter all last year coming in for drives, uh, but now somebody that might go out and, and they, he can make an impression early. That's how Trey Benson, like the pathway for somebody to end up fulfilling the prophecy of fantasy, which is that a couple of rookie running backs always contribute, is it's never like you – it always happens, but you never see exactly how it's going to happen. Um, but the path is there for Trey Benson as a talent – I disagree with the contention that Michael Wilson is a fantasy loser because they drafted Marvin Harrison. Wilson was never going to be the starting yeah, he's not a one. wide receiver one. It's better for him, in my opinion, to fit into that uh, you know, desperation streamer category. Um, we'll take another quick break. I want to come back and talk about Seattle. Moving through the NFC West, uh, when I said I wanted to talk about Seattle, I didn't mean for a long time. No, because they don't, don't they did not to. make draft investments in a lot of those uh, kind of players that we like to talk about. They nope. drafted a fourth round tight end. I think they were very interested in uh, Michael Penix Jr. and then that was over very early for them. All right, next team. Didn't know if you had anything to add. No, no, I I have nothing. What to about add. it? I mean, the wide receiver room we knew that didn't need anything. Um, so I can't really say they walked away as winners. There wasn't somebody that was going to come usurp them. Uh, same with the the running back room was filled out. So they just mm -hmm. spent their picks on D linemen, O linemen, linebackers, and uh, there you go. The Los Angeles Rams. This is a uh oh much more interesting uh oh discussion. Uh, the Rams invested their third round draft pick on a player that I had ranked. At number one on my board going into the draft. Uh oh. Oh, did you really? He was yeah, number one on my board. Blake Corum, running back out of Michigan, arrives in the third round in Los Angeles. All of the holding their breath, Kyron Williams managers, they they didn't get what they wanted. Now I, I'm not saying that this is some sort of death knell for Kyron Williams. But it is also not the same thing as a fifth round or sixth round depth running back being selected. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, it's it's not Ronnie Rivers is your direct backup. It's like this is a it's a capable player. It's a touchdown it, scorer. And it's and I mean, we like I was very I was very <laughs> you interested got there, in Mike, Kyron. You got some I'm us? trying to figure out how I want to say it of just like like we weren't you know shouting from the mountains that the Rams are going to take a running back, but it was they have done this so many times of taking day two running backs when you feel like the team doesn't need to do that. There's other positions on your team that need to be fixed, and they kept taking running backs, and they did it yet again. And so, for redraft purposes, you know, it, maybe Jay, I don't know if you would still be as confident as Kyron being number two overall. I think that he's still going to be an RB one, but now, like. In dynasty and those things, you're just you will be looking over your shoulder and continuing to hold your breath the whole entire time because if it's like if if Kyra misses a game, he missed five last year. He, yeah, he did and seven the year before. And let's say Corum goes on the field and they don't lose any production. Does Kyron go right back to his job? I don't know. Yeah, so uh, you know. Obviously, this is not good news for Kyron's fantasy, you know, ability to have that kind of Christian McCaffrey type of workload that he had last year, where he was, you know, on the field for ninety percent of snaps and just doing everything. Yes, he was everything, and so um, th that's that's a hit. Uh, he's not my running back two overall anymore. You you have you have to adjust a little bit. I think you'll have him lose some snaps, but. Uh, I you know I was very interested in this, and there's two thoughts that I have here primarily. One was I went and watched the press conferences afterwards just to see how they're talking about Corm. They really like Corm. One of the things I liked about him is that he reminded them of Kyron Williams. He's kind of the same, similar build, similar play style, so he's someone that can kind of fill in because Kyron has missed games. And so if, if that player goes down, 
Obviously, you've got someone much more capable than Blake Corum to come in and step up. I th Sean McVay has just always been a very primarily one-back offense. I still believe they will run that way with Kyron. The GM um, was talking about how it, it, it takes a lot to pick up this offense, to pick up McVay's offense. So they've got a vision for Blake Corum, but it's I think that vision is more of a long-term plan. So dynasty-wise, yeah, I think this hurts Kyron much more. Redraft-wise, I don't want to overreact. In fact, the second point that I want to bring up was that the episode we had at the end of this last season of the top 10 things to remember. One of my things that I wanted yeah, to remember. Yeah, the Tank Bigsby clause. Exactly right. It was, if you are a very good player, you're a very good player. I was worried about Kenneth Walker when Charbonnet was drafted. I was worried about Travis Etienne when Tank Bigsby was drafted. Those guys were day three picks as well. So this year you have day, three, two. Er, day, day two, round three uh, picks. You had uh, Trey Benson, Blake Corum, Marshawn Lloyd go in the third round this year. So I don't want to overreact to the incumbents and say, look, if they're if they're really good, they're really good. And these players can be an important backup, an important depth piece for the team, and maybe a future option when the contracts run out. But I'm not going to overreact and, you know, hopefully Kyron really falls in the draft that people think this is going to be a timeshare because then I'll be uh, – I'll have a lot of Kyron in redraft. I think those are really good thoughts. Uh, I think uh, in some of those situations, the harder part maybe is that Kyron, you know, fifth round draft pick, and then mm -hmm. on the financial yeah, it's commitment. not ETN with a first, right? But it, but but you're right. You don't want to overreact. You want to react appropriately. We have a long run running history of McVeigh and these, you know, Cam Akers and these players coming in. So it's something to pay attention to. I agree with Mike and the fact that you know if Kyron misses a stretch of games, is that change things coming out of it? But right now. Um, and then goal line. I, I'm just curious. Blake Corum scored 45 times in two years, uh, the last two years at Michigan. If that will be something, you'll be clinching. Yeah, you for sure. You'll just that's, when they get on the goal line, you just want to be sure it's Kyron. That's the redraft fear because Kyron was so good at scoring touchdowns. Right. It's like that was that was his fantasy goodness came because he was used in the passing game and he was used at the goal line. You don't 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 take that from me, McVay. The 49ers spend a first round draft pick on. Adonai Mitchell. No, it wasn't Adonai Mitchell. Uh, Troy Fra – no, not Troy Franklin. No, uh, no. Oh, it was Ricky Pearsall out of Florida, and they did not, as of this recording, ship off uh, any Brandon Ayuk or Debo Samuels. So you listen to the team talk about him now, and it's a strengthening of the wide receiver room in selecting a player that, if you watch C.J. Stroud or other NFL players react, yeah. they're in love with Ricky Pearsall and what they saw out of him in Florida. You know, fantasy wise, who's your winners and losers because of the Pearsall pick? The Pearsall pick makes me just hold my breath. I feel like you know the the San Francisco Forty Nine ers are going to be one of the, the last teams that I <clears throat> stat out for the ultimate draft kit because I'm still waiting to see who all the wide receivers are going to be on this roster. They they got Jake, Jacob Cowing from Arizona in the fourth round as well, so they brought in two extra wide receivers. I can easily see them sticking with uh, Debo and Ayuk. I could see them trading either one of them. Pearsall was teammates with Ayuk back in Arizona, uh, weirdly enough, uh, even though he was drafted out of Florida. Ricky Pearsall is a very, very, very good wide receiver. He's an exceptional athlete, runs great routes, and I think has the best hands in the entire class. It's a great situation to go to a good uh, – you know, offensive-minded head coach, I am very hesitant as to how much fantasy football goodness you're going to have here. At best, he comes in fourth in targets, probably fifth in targets as, mm -hmm. as it stands right now. And so I I, I don't see his, his path is not clear until trades clear it for him. Yeah, I've been interested where people are putting him in those rookie rankings. It's... Uh... I, I'm not I'm not ready to move him above some of these more clear path guys just because he was, you know, end of first versus the first pick of the second round, uh, like a Keon Coleman. Yeah, the, I, the, go ahead. The Ricky Pearsall, Xavier Leggett, first rounders yeah, who ended yeah. the first round versus the Lad McConkey Keon Coleman, second rounders yes. who went to better situations. Yes. Those are really fascinating. I, I think most people have those second rounders ahead of the first round for fantasy purposes. I, I, I know the three of us at this table do. Um, but it's interesting because um, 
Xavier Leggett and Ricky Pearsall, they went to bad situations uh, for fantasy purposes as it appears now, but I do think that both of those players are very talented. They added some running back depth in the fourth round, Isaac Garendo, who is really, really fast. And big. Yeah, he's, he's it's a such big boy. a beautiful combo. When you're 220 pounds, you rub, run 4-3-3. Three, three. He is like my favorite, favorite, favorite. If if your three-round rookie draft goes and he's not drafted, he is my favorite. Like, go to the waiver, drop some other backup running back you have, and stash him behind. Uh, in the press conference, they were talking about how much they loved his speed. And Kyle Shanahan specifically said he reminded him a lot, his play style, of Elijah Mitchell. So I just see him as kind of that, that perfect backup behind CMC, where obviously CMC is all. CMC is everything. CMC is gorgeous. He's beautiful. <laughs> he's talented. Um, well, this is the uh, – we always talk about Miami signing speedsters. This is the OG, right? Shanahan mm -hmm. likes those guys. So, yeah. Um, I mean, just try to, try to be a DB – and tackle a guy who's 220 pounds who can run 4 3, three. <laughs> Yeah, his highlights are insane. Coming and, for your soul. And his production profile of, of the receiving game, it's close to the marks that, that we want to see. So, and, and it's nice. Of I, Finally, we don't have to overreact to San Francisco drafting a running back and be like, is – is this the guy now? Is he? Is, yeah, is we don't it, is it Ty it. Davis Price? Is it Trey Sermon? Who's the guy here? It's Christian McCaffrey. But I'm I'm on Jason's side of I I think that this guy will end up the 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 backup that you want to have on your roster. The Carolina Panthers they spent a first round draft pick, the last pick in the first round, trading up for Xavier Leggett, who is going to be utilized. All sorts of ways by Dave Canales in Carolina. I have a feeling because Carolina feels like a bit of a condemnation in I've this draft. I've called it Siberia. Yeah, that's the word. Yep. I think Xavier Leggett and their second-round pick, Jonathan Brooks, are both going to be potentially undervalued in specific rookie drafts. And I like both of those guys to contribute. I will say from what I have seen in my few uh, rookie drafts, Brooks is not being undervalued. But Leggett is falling further than than a first round wide receiver normally would. Well, you've you've still got Adam Thielen there. Obviously, he's thirty three years old. He's not the future. But yeah. they did trade for Deontay Johnson, so yeah. you, you would imagine Deontay Johnson is going to be first in targets. Uh, it was interesting. I I saw this on Twitter. I I don't remember uh, who it was. F forgive me for the shout out. But talking about they so they did, traded up one spot. They went from the thirty three to the thirty two to go from the second round to the to the first round. And the theory is, since it took Xavier Leggett five years to break out in college, they need that fifth-year option for his NFL That's a good breakout. joke. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he's utilized. He's a, a super athlete, and you know Dave Canales I have a lot of confidence in turning things around. Jonathan Brooks, first running back off the board. Um, Much higher than people thought. People were assuming third that, round. that the 56 – where the Cowboys were picking would be the first running back taken. He goes Which it would have been had Jerry Jones not come out and talked about his Maybe, adoration. Maybe, genuinely. So, uh, Jonathan Brooks arrives with, I think, a very clear path to the job. I mean, Chuba Hubbard, Chuba Hubbard was thrust into being the starter and performed pretty well, considering. But this was not the default state that the Carolina Panthers wanted to be in. It was going to be Miles Sanders, who did nothing, Chuba Hubbard is he profiles as what he was with Christian McCaffrey, a backup to me. And Jonathan Brooks profiles as a an every down runner. Listening to Canales talk about the archetype that he's looking for, he even he even talked about how they used Rashad White. This is so good for fantasy football in the sense that they want a back that will leak out and has great hands. Jonathan Brooks is a great pass catcher. I don't worry at all that he can't do what Rashad White did and just take a million dump offs. I love it. They want him to be on the field all the time. They want a three down back who can mask whether it's a run or a pass and they want to commit to the run. I I I actually love this landing spot for Jonathan Brooks. L how early it was, the draft capital, the talent. The only big fear uh from a redraft perspective to me is simply what is his timeline coming back from the ACL? You know, it's like, oh, he's supposed to be ready for training camp. Great. If he's if he's at training camp and he's doing everything from the get-go, 
fine. But he did have a late ACL tear. You would imagine they bring him along slower. This is not a team that needs to come out hot out of the gates. Um, no, that makes sense. You know, so yeah. it, I, I think at the beginning of the year you'll see a lot Camp of Miles Sanders. Camp will tell us a lot. Yes, yes, we'll 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 learn. Um, but there, <laughs> Miles Sanders is. Paid a lot of money. <laughs> we get to talk about the Falcons again. Uh. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing because Kyle put his own thoughts on the fantasy winners and losers for the Falcons. The winners, he put three tier emojis. And the losers, he put the city of Atlanta, Kirk Cousins, and anybody who has faith in reason and logic. Michael Penix Jr. goes eighth overall. Michael Penix Jr. goes eighth overall. Congratulations, Michael. I mean that just stinks so much for him. It does. It's like, and now he's now he's this. He, now he's our joke, you know. And it's yeah. like it's not your fault. All you did was play you did great football. You did everything you were supposed to do. Can you, you got like, drafted in the top ten? No one would ever draft a backup in the top ten in the twenties. Sure, Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love, we'll do that. I want Penix to go demand a trade. <laughs> I want him to just, you know, the truth Eli is, Manning is, this. The truth is, he's probably playing in two years. Three. Or two, no, two or less. You're saying he starts next season, or you're saying after two? After two. Oh, that's what I meant by three. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think in I think three years. I'm just play. saying the worst case scenario I think for Michael Penix, Penix is that he's playing after two years. I said Penix. <laughs> I said Penix. I don't it's, know who's laughing. It, it's Penix. a little yeah. essy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, look, the tape. Penix. The, the tape is recorded, so. <laughs> You know Anyone can hit hey. that back 15 seconds to find out. No, listen, I don't know. Listen, the best thing that happened you be to this judge. To Leave this a show. comment in YouTube. No. Let, let me know what he said. I don't know. Yeah. This was a blessing to the show because we might not have to say that name again for two years. Yeah. Yeah, it was a problem. I'm telling you this. This is not a joke. I've 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 shared this in our company Slack. Every time I go to say his name, I am terrified. Yes. <laughs> I am I am like, oh man, I gotta do why this is again. That? Uh it's just, <laughs> just because re rewind, you'll yeah, find you'll know hit, why. Hit that back fifteen a couple times and look there's no see. there is no No, I did not. <laughs> oh man, it sounded very ussy. <laughs> Sound like an S, not I, an X. I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, yeah well, you're gonna We'll hear it, all right. Um, we're done. Talk about the Falcons. Defensive lineman, edge, D line, linebacker. Uh, genuinely, sixth round running back. Um, genuinely, a, a a huge winner of this draft, I think, is Drake London. Yeah, Drake London yeah. had the chance. And Darnell Mooney. Sure, and, and Darnell Mooney for sure because. Odunze was right there. They for should them have taken Roma Odunze. Yeah, I mean that's you, why uh, he's a winner. Yeah, or or Turner if they want a defense. You know, to, I don't know something to help the team. But obviously Drake London now stay and Kyle Pitts. Those two guys I think stay with great target market shares in an offense that's going to throw the ball a lot more and a lot better with Kirk Cousins. And so those are huge winners from this draft because it it should have and could have gone differently. The Saints spent a fifth round pick on Spencer Rattler. He fell in the draft. We thought that they would add maybe a wide receiver. They did not have high draft capital opportunities. They had a first and second round pick they spent on defense and an offensive tackle. And they had massive tackle needs, so they, they their hands were tied. Yeah, and they got a great one uh, at pick 14. But um, So Rashid Shahid does come away a winner in this draft. Michael Thomas is gone. Shahid is very talented and clearly has a rapport with Derek Carr, and um, which, look, not everybody wants that, but he has it, so... There you go. And two of the best names in the draft. They got Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> Kool-Aid McKinstry. That's that's awesome. And then Bub. Bub means. Bub means business. business. <laughs> yeah, Mike. Oh, I, I feel like Spencer Rattler is a pretty cool name as well. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. It's not bad. Okay. Yeah. Good um, job, Saints. Yeah, did, focus on what's important. It, look, that's, I mean, when I'm, when I'm at the, uh, when I'm playing the ponies, I picked the name I like the best. That's how you're so supposed you're, to do it. So yeah. you're 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 taking Kool Aid. Yeah, Heck yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Round two. His name is Kool Aid. It's awesome. Uh, all right, Tampa. Third round pick on a wideout, Jalen McMillan. This, I this one feels like. Is this a replacement for Chris Godwin? For Chris Godwin, that feels like the clock is ticking. Yeah, and then Bucky Irving in the fourth, which. I'm going to remind Jason what he said at the top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't overreact. 
And we did it with Tampa well, already in the past, by the way. He said don't overreact when a player is really good. <laughs> Which Rashad White is, Mike. How dare you? He, but Bucky Irving is a pass-catching running back they took in the fourth round. Jason, is Rashad White really good? Rashad White is very serviceable. <laughs> he's so he's so good that Dave Canales references him as something to replace on his new team. That's how good he is. He is an exceptional pass catcher. He's gr he is he which is, is what very, Irving is. Very, um, that, that's, that's the scary part. But that's not scary because well, Rashad White's that good at that position. I'd have been much more scared with a first and second down back that jacks up Rashad White's first and second down opportunity. Sure, and obviously with Canales being gone, we don't know the system and how they're going to deploy these running backs differently. Keyshawn or the Vaughn, same. everybody. Um, don't, yeah, do it, don't do it, it again. Could be. Uh, Bucky Irvin is, is, a, is a talented back at catching the ball, very explosive in Penix. short areas, not a long – Penix uh, Jr. Not a long speed guy, but yeah, I, I'm not going to overreact to this. Rashad White's still the dude, um, but they can have someone else come in and catch the ball out of the backfield now. They couldn't last year. They did re-sign Chase Edmonds. They See? Yep, proved it. All right, AFC Draft recap on Thursday, and a reminder, I'm extending, I'm arbitrarily extending our deadline because I want to give a signed Kyle Borgannoni, Michael Penix, Penix Jr. jersey out. Uh, so ultimatedraftkid.com. We'll do that giveaway on Tuesday. Um, and there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed the early episode, the Dynasty Pass, getting all the updates at ultimatedraftkid.com. Oh, we're gonna have people are gonna be going back in the show and listening to that. <laughs> well, yeah. That's the first thing we're I'm gonna doing. find out. Let's uh let's wrap this up. <laughs> right. We gotta get that recording out. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.